What's going on, people of YouTube? I am Dez, and I am here to talk to you over a scavenger game. And it's really crazy because this and Rush are my favorite game types of Battlefield 3, and I really have not put any scavenger games on my channel as of late. And I actually, there's probably only one or two. And there's a couple clips from them in Full Control Episode 1, which I'll put in the description below. You can check that out. But other than that, I really haven't showcased this, and this is actually one of my most favorite game types. And if you hear rustling and rattling in the background, I have a four-month-old puppy who doesn't care if I'm doing a commentary or not. But to get on with it, things change in the YouTube realm, and I don't know if I am subject to change as much as I need to be to be relevant in the YouTube realm. And, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there when I say, you know, Trials and the Terror and Tourist Town or whatever the hell it's called. And, you know, Prop Hunt. Those games all look so stupid to me. And I don't know how people can just sit in front of their computer and watch that sort of gameplay. And granted, I understand that the individuals playing that are playing it with another group of individuals and you're supposed to be taking on the personality of them more so than the gameplay it's behind. But I just feel like that literally brings out the dumb in some people. You know, who wants to dress up as a bush and, and fly around the room while other people shoot at you with a shotgun? I mean, that just does not appeal to me at all. But at the same time, sitting here talking over this commentary doesn't appeal at all anymore either now it's moved on to the live comms and exaggerating your expressions during your live comms to make it seem that you are more into the game than you actually are and that's really not what I ever set out into YouTube to do I never set out to be a personality as far as a character other than myself I wanted to you know shoot the shit with you with real situations that go on in my life as a person that doesn't treat YouTube as their primary source of income because I think when you start doing that when you start treating YouTube and you know gaming as a job you step away from the fun aspect of it and you start letting it consume you based on what is relevant in the community and right now what's relevant is you know having your face up in the top right corner while you are doing a live com over a gameplay and you are freaking out and doing different things that are really not your personality outside of the realm of YouTube and that's really what it boils down to guys is that I am not a personality inside YouTube that is not going to be a personality outside of YouTube you know so when I have a absolute shitty day and I come home and I want to make a commentary about you about it and tell you how my day went and how I think that I could have improved it and that sort of thing that's what I want you guys to listen to you know I don't want to you know commentate live over gameplay like this right here and tell you my thoughts how I'm playing when I'm playing what I decided and when I decided to switch out my pistol right here and shoot this guy because I thought it was the better decision because I assume already that you know that the decisions that I make when I make them in a game that come out in my favor are calculated based on what I think is going to be appropriate at that time you know I've seen countless youtubers and it's crazy because I see youtubers now with like 80 to 100 thousand subscribers and they're getting 4,000 views a video they're getting four you know 4,000 views on a video that they work really hard on and they're getting 4,000 views on a video that they you know spend five minutes slap it together and then that's the video and don't mind my sniping here I'm not really good with the ACOG scope in this game and uh, I just felt like chilling out here up on top of this roof so or actually up inside this building and when you're playing uh, conquest or uh, three there's a three three uh, conquest demo conquest domination on this map and the people will just sit in this little room here like 10 to 15 people and just mow down anybody that comes in here and, and it's really a strategic spot to uh, get a bunch of kills it's a strategic spot to keep the enemy at bay in one area but it gets old after a little bit and I end up getting down and uh, you can parachute out of here so that's really good too but you know we're on the countdown guys we are on the countdown to Battlefield 4 
and I haven't even pre-ordered it yet, which I, I really need to do. Um, I'll get around to that. I didn't buy Grand Theft Auto V. You know, I, um, I'll probably rent it at, you know, the Red Box, or I will uh, borrow it from uh, my fiance's brother. He, he got it. It's not something that I needed to rush out and spend $60 on because I know as soon as I'm finished with all of the main missions, I'm not just going to want to turn on my Xbox. You know, and that's another thing. It's not even for the PC yet. It's for the Xbox, which is, which is crap. There's 350,000 people that have signed a petition to get Grand Theft Auto V pushed to the PC. And not just a port. And there's been some reports that say that there is code written in the Xbox version are written in the version of Grand Theft Auto 5 currently available that supports it being on the PC so we'll see how that comes along and you can uh, read that on IGN and I think Kotaku has that as well if you want to go find it there but uh but yeah I didn't see a point to go get it but definitely definitely need to pre-order my copy of Battlefield 4 gonna get the you know the season pass the premium edition just like I did with uh, with this Battlefield 3 and you know what I might even just get the game first and then wait until there's a sale on you know Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4 premium and get it then you know because I'm gonna have a lot to do when the first when the game comes out right away you know we've got the pre pre-order missions that we'll be able to do I haven't even played the single-player campaign of Battlefield 3 which I really should do um, it would probably teach me how to fly a helicopter in an airplane better but I haven't gotten around to it. I probably won't either. I've never really been into playing um, first-person shooter campaigns, except for the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 Medal of Honor series. Absolutely amazing series. And I hear that Warfighter also has an amazing campaign, but I haven't played that either. Nor have I played War or, uh, Medal of Honor 2010 uh, single player. But I would like to. That I mean, it's I have Dead Space 3. Haven't played it. I need to play it. I have I got the humble bundle where I supported the cancer patients and uh, and whatever the charity that was going on for that. And I got you know five or six games, including this game. And uh, I really haven't loaded any of those games up yet because I'm waiting for the the you know pristine time to load them up and pretty much you know just go on a single player kick where I break away from playing the multiplayer games and really just sit back and relax and play those type of games. That's really what I'm waiting for. And that, that brings me to another topic of discussion. It's really funny how we're in this war with you know consoles and PCs and gamers and, and what makes a hardcore gamer and a PC gamer and all this other kind of stuff. And you know one of the main benefits of having a PC and a P being a PC gamer is that the Steam sales, the Origin sales are so ridiculous. You know if I there's no way I'd be able to get Dead Space and five other games for eight dollars, okay? If if I was buying them on the Xbox 360 or the PS3, it just doesn't happen. Mostly because that money that they're accumulating is making up for them having to print physical copies, and I can just download the game digitally from the uh, the internet, which should have been what the DRM was of Xbox One, but everyone complained about it. What they really needed to complain about was that the Xbox One needed to authenticate to their servers to get the, the stuff. However, having DRM would have saved a lot of money as opposed to physical discs. And sooner or later, guys, console gamers will have to go to physical disc or go to digital download and digital disc. It's just inevitable. You know, um, it costs money to print the labels, it costs money to print up the um, the game cartridges and the game discs and the game blu-rays and, and you know I mean if, if you bought a blu-ray today to burn it's like twenty five dollars a disc it might have gone down a little bit but so you gotta think about that mass produced is pretty crazy so if we could get away from the thought process of having the physical copy of a game and get right into the digital download era which is really what Steam is pushing and Origins pushing you know I don't own a physical copy of Battlefield 3. I don't own a physical copy of uh, Dead Space 3. I don't own a physical copy of Final Fantasy that um, that I just purchased yet. 
I don't own any of those things and because they're digital I could download them right off the internet and as long as that company is still around I'll be able to do so longer than I will keep a CD good and maybe I'd even lose it but the game's gonna be over here guys I hope you enjoyed this commentary I know I am the last of a dying breed doing commentary over gameplay but it's what I do for you take it easy guys this has been Dez let me know in the comments what you think bye